way that this bug can happen, number one, you can accidentally be tying the same timetable to every teacher. This is version of the bug I can imagine, number one. I haven't looked at your code at all. I have no idea how your code is structured. This is just off the top of my head. Every single one of these is identical. I want the timetable. Oh, man. Dude, wait, I found your bug. Do you want a free code review from an ex-fang software engineer? Join my Discord and submit your project for feedback live on my stream. Links can be found in the description down below. All right. The goal of the project is to generate a timetable for the whole school where no classes clash, as well as considering other things like teachers wanting to have their own room. Oh, and just to remind everyone, not to remind, to inform everyone, we are looking for a bug specifically. I'll give some feedback on the general code structure, but we're gonna spend most of our time trying to identify a specific bug. When creating the timetables, the lessons are assigned to every teacher timetable so that every teacher has the same lessons in the same rooms, even if they don't teach the subject. So my initial thought here, my very first question is, does every teacher receive the same timetable? Or does every teacher get a unique timetable, but all of them are getting every lesson? Okay, option number one, you can accidentally be tying the same timetable to every teacher. And then the genetic algorithm comes through, sees that there's only one timetable available. And so it just assigns the lesson to all of them. So this is bug version one that I can imagine, in which case it would be helpful if we had some sense of like, what is the timetable's ID, right? Because then we would very obviously be able to see that this teacher has timetable ID one, this teacher has timetable ID one, this teacher has timetable ID one. This is version of the bug I can imagine, number one. I haven't looked at your code at all. I have no idea how your code is structured. This is just off the top of my head. This is option number one. Option number two, is that it is possible that for whatever reason, the restrictions are not being checked correctly. So lesson one gets assigned out to everyone. Is it only supposed to assign a lesson to one teacher? Is this considered a valid configuration? No. So only teacher one or teacher two should ever get this lesson. Wouldn't this be easier to do in Excel? I mean, it could be like a school assignment. It could be something that has to attach to a larger system, right? Like, let's pretend that you're doing uh, generation for the NFL, right? This is a thing that gets talked about a lot when uh, they do ads for AWS. You're trying to do the NFL schedule, right? You're not going to do that in Excel because if you try to do that in Excel, you're going to run out of memory. Almost certainly it's too complicated. Okay, great. So I'm trying to look at your output and get an understanding of what this means to me. Teacher one, my understanding is should only be able to teach maths and further maths. However, they're getting assigned a bunch of things. I'm pretty sure that your data types are probably fine, right? Like room number seems reasonable. Your teacher class. Oh, I saw this earlier today. I was reading. This is hilarious. I really enjoy this. This, I'm not so worried about. Getters and setters, nice. Weird knit, you definitely don't need to comment that, but that's just a code cleanliness thing. Um, Timetable, default data. Okay, so let's look at this default data. So your six periods are hard coded. I wanna be clear, there's definitely a better way to do this, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Your six periods are hard coded. And the idea is that you're going to just slot in a class name here. Would it be at all handy to run the code after adding a dummy teacher who is not flagged to teach any classes? Possibly. We might do that. So the thing that I'm interested in most is this. Okay. Every single one of these is identical. 
So I'm a little curious. The very first thing I want to do this. I want the timetable. Oh, man, dude, wait, I found your bug. I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive. I'm curious. Do you understand? Do you know pointers at all? Do you know anything about pointers and like how data gets stored? I am about to explain this to you and you're about to be so sad. So we've got default data and it's going to give you. You say, Python, please give me one dictionary. Please give me one dictionary and Python comes along. It says, here's this little chunk of memory that I've made for you. Here you go, baby. Let's get it. OK, great. So now you're like, I want to put a bunch of stuff in here. Python's like, bet you absolute king, you fucking legend. Sounds good to me. Now, here's what you're expecting to happen. You're expecting that you go, hey, I want variable one to be equal to default da data. And you're thinking that Python is going, absolutely, King, here you go. This is what you intuitively feel like is happening. But what's actually happening is that Python is going, sure thing, boss, you got it. And now the idea is that any time, technically it looks like this, I guess, they go whoop. So now any time that you reference variable one, it's just a new way of accessing this. So now I want to be clear. I've got no fucking idea if your code's going to work after this, but here's how I would solve this. Okay. What I would do is I would come down here. I would make a static method that's called uh, default timetable. And I would just return it. Now, you can probably see why I think this is an ugly way of doing this generation, but timetable dot default timetable. So now what we're doing is we are wrapping your request for new memory in a function. OK. So now the idea is that we instead have a function. Called. Uh, default timetable. And that function is the thing that requests this. You can consider that when you say dict or this you request new memory this means that since the method call does it instead of getting back dead beef you'll get back something different i don't know boom all right i don't know if this works to be clear but we've definitely unblocked you and 12 FMA is certainly different from not having anything. So here we go. Host has a high school in America student to see what it's like as a software engineer to deal with bugs like these. I want you to see that a lot of this is pattern recognition that you will build up over time. Like if you remember correctly, I clocked your bug before looking at your code. Uh, because just from the sound of your bug, I thought it might be this, which is what was happening, right? Where effectively the same timetable was being used, right? So I clocked your bug before looking at your code just from I've done it myself a million fucking times. I've made that mistake so many times. Uh, and part of this is like a misunderstanding about how computers work, uh, which the more comfortable that you get programming, the less often that those will happen. <laughs>